Why do narcissists copy? Narcissists copy in terms of blatant copying, such as wearing the same clothes that you might wear, copying your work, copying your ideas. The copying can occur with regard to the mirroring of your behaviour, liking the things that you like, disliking the things that you do not like, mirroring the way that you sit, possibly the, even the way that you talk, the way that you angle your head. So not only do we copy the way that you behave and act, your interests, things that you don't like, your view of the world, but also we commandeer things that are yours and replicate them or use them for ourselves. Why is this done? There are a number of reasons behind this behaviour. The first is... It is done out of a sense of entitlement and the absence of a boundary. What is important for you to remember is that we need the prime aims, fuel and control character traits and residual benefits. And therefore, narcissism has evolved to enable us to achieve those things so that we thrive and we survive. The narcissism has certain constituent parts to it. An absence of emotional empathy, a sense of entitlement, an absence of accountability, absent or no or poor boundary recognition, the use of manipulations. These and other things are instrumental within narcissism in the way that an engine, a steering wheel, tires, brakes are utilised within a motor vehicle. Some engines are bigger than others, some tyres are more durable than others, but they are the central and constituent parts that go together along with other things to make that motor vehicle. So it runs so that it doesn't just sit there. In the same way, our narcissism means that it has certain constituent parts. The sense of entitlement, the lack of emotional empathy and the absence of boundaries are part of those things and they enable us to copy. We copy because we see nothing wrong in doing so. We copy because we fail to see that there is a boundary between you and us. Indeed, you are an extension of what we are. We bolt you on and what you are becomes part of us. We utilise who and what you are to achieve our aims, and we don't see the boundary between the two. Our narcissism engenders in us a sense of entitlement that we can do these things without any consideration as to how it impacts upon anybody else, that we are able to do this without being concerned about it being viewed as impolite, the wrong thing to do, insulting, cheeky, whatever it might be determined that would cause us to be prevented from achieving that which must be achieved. So we copy because we're able to do so, because we see it as entitled to do as we require, and if that means copying you, then we can do that. We can copy because there is no boundary between you and I. And we have no emotional empathy for you. So we are unconcerned as to the impact of our copying upon you. Save within, of course, the parameters of securing and maintaining control over you. But that's not a concern for your well-being. It's a concern for how our behaviour impacts upon the ability to control. We also copy because we are chameleons. In effect, we don't exist. The construct is an amalgam of 
items from elsewhere, all bolted on. And we copy because the absence of a true self in the day-to-day means that we have to purloin the ideas, thoughts, processes from elsewhere in order to fit in and to function. Some narcissists are capable, as a consequence of improved and considerable intellect, to the creation of new ideas and new thoughts. But even then, there are certain narcissists that will utilise the ideas of others, take them and improve upon them. There'll be others that will steal them outright, seeing nothing wrong in doing so. And there are other narcissists who must do this habitually and repeatedly, because there is simply nothing there. Copying in terms of, for instance, ideas, copying somebody else's work, of course, whilst driven by that sense of entitlement and lack of accountability, also plays into the necessity of asserting asserting control. So a simple situation would be, let's take a narcissist at university. He has failed to complete an assignment, and therefore the tutor will reprimand him, and that will affect his control As a consequence of that, the narcissism causes the narcissist to copy somebody else's work, to plagiarise, in order to nullify that threat to control. The necessity of copying, or taking somebody's idea and building upon it, usually improving it, sometimes not, is part of asserting control over other people. The need, for example, to create a new software system, the provision of which provides control through selling it to customers, means that a narcissist wouldn't think twice about trying to obtain the code from a competitor to then bastardize that or out-and-out replicate it so that the product can be created for their organization, which can then be sold, which obtains the residual benefits of money and asserts control over the customers by supplying them with a product. So copying, in that sense, plays into our need for the assertion of control. Of course, the narcissist copies, but will invariably deny doing so. If you were to point out to the narcissist that the narcissist has copied, then that will amount to challenge fuel, and you'll be threatening the narcissist's sense of control, And therefore, you will be met with comments such as, I wore this dress before you did. Or, it was always my idea, you stole it from me. Or, you copied me. You're always doing that. You're always imitating what I achieve. This can often be seen, for instance, with regard to particular authors. You will get a successful and famous author who suddenly then finds themselves having to fend off a variety of lawsuits from narcissists who come crawling out of the woodwork and believe that they came up with the idea for Harry Potter first. They did not. J.K. Rowling did. But because someone somewhere decided that they had an idea about a boy wizard, that somehow Ms. Rowling had pinched their idea. And therefore, the narcissist actually accuses the victim of copying when that hasn't occurred. This is done because the narcissist believes that they are entitled to utilise the original material and claim that it is based upon an idea that they had or the rough outline, notwithstanding the fact that that individual and Miss Rowling had never even met one another. Then, in such circumstances, The narcissist's magical thinking causes them to believe that somehow they came up with the idea for Harry Potter first. J.K. Rowling somehow pinched that from them, even though having had nothing to do with them, and indeed there wasn't much to pinch in the first place. But that doesn't stop the narcissist from accusing the victim of copying. Or the narcissist does copy the original work and then claims that they did it first. Where the copying takes place, and you say to the narcissist, you have copied me, you will threaten their control. And the narcissism will first of all start with the denial, 
claiming, no, I haven't copied it, what are you talking about? And will deny blatant similarities, because from the narcissist's perspective, there aren't any. The unaware narcissist cannot see that they are similar. Or, even if they do go to the next stage of their defence by claiming, well, yes, I can see that they're similar, but that's because you copied me. And there is the projection. The presence of the emptiness within the narcissist requires the creation of a construct, and the easiest way for that construct to be created is for the narcissist to copy other people, copy the clothes that they wear, the jokes that they tell, the interests that they have, the places that they have visited, the cuisines that they enjoy, and pass them off as either their own ideas or to not notice that they are indeed copying. This imitation is necessary. The construct must be created. It must be there to draw more people to the narcissist, so more fuel is provided, and to imprison the creature, to keep it within the construct. Copying is all about that sense of entitlement, rather than putting in the hard graft in order to create. The narcissist wants the flat pack creation already to put together, to bolt it on, and sees nothing wrong at all because the narcissism either blinds the narcissist to what they are doing as being wrong, or the narcissist, where conscious and calculating, knows that they've copied, but with no regrets, no conscience, no remorse, doesn't care, and regards it as appropriate for them to take this step, and utilising their Machiavellian behaviours, where greater or ultra, they are able to reject any suggestion that the copying has taken place. The narcissist copies, driven by a lack of emotional empathy, a sense of entitlement and no boundary recognition. The narcissist copies to address the emptiness, to hide it away, to allow the creation of the construct. And I explain in the video Character Trait Acquisition more about how that happens. It's done, copying is done, in order to assert control, part of the prime aims. And the narcissist will deny, deflect, etc. in order to nullify any threat to control where you're accused of copying. The copying comes from a lack of originality. This lack of originality arises because of the creation of the false self. The false self is indeed a construct, a facsimile. It is quite simply a copy. And that is why the narcissist copies. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.